design games, I always say, you know, you should be able to have a coconut and a crayon and make something fun out of it. And, you know, the excuses of, well, I don't have a SGI machine and I don't have a, you know, 200 megahertz Pentium. I mean, you know, understand what it means to make games and gameplay and study the great games, study chess, study checkers, understand why there's as much technology in Street Fighter 2 as there is chess in Street Fighter 2. And those are the things I think that the, that the game business really needs, is people who understand gameplay. So I would say that, um, learn what game making is, make sure you really want to make games, and then just find a way to get in and keep pushing, uh, and don't let anyone discourage you, because it's certainly doable. You know, hell, you know, as they say, if I did it, you know, anybody can do it, so. I, you know, I, I never really uh, intended to get into the game business. It was uh, really a, a total fluke. Um, I had always played games as a kid and stuff, and I'd always been a video game fan, but my initial intention was to go into filmmaking, and uh, you know, I'd gone to film school and all that, and basically the video game thing kind of happened while I had just gotten out of film school, and I was sort of waiting for, you know, the call from Steven Spielberg or George Lucas or something, and, uh, you know, in the meantime, I figured it would you know, I needed to eat, you know, and make money and stuff, so I uh, had heard about this job as, you know, game testers, which basically what I thought at the time, which is not the case, that all they did was sit around all day and play video games, so I figured, oh, this will be something cool to, you know, bide my time and make some money, uh, you know, until I get to make movies, and I kind of fell into it like that and got the job from Sony back when Sony was Sony ImageSoft, and, uh, you know, once I got there, I started seeing the potential of uh, the next generation of video games and seeing how, as game designers, we can take games beyond the simple side-scrolling, you know, stuff uh, that we had been seeing for the last five or six years and really take players into a new, uh, you know, I don't know, uh, sort of a new direction of fun and in, in gameplay. So, you know, since then I just sort of haven't looked back. I just started as a tester and kept going. It was, really, it was an accident, really. You may have already seen this. Style. Sophistication. The ability to launch napalm into oncoming traffic. If these are the things you look for in an automobile, it's time you test drive Twisted Metal 2. Fully automated weaponry, dual rocket launchers, and the new APS flamethrowing system. All standard. Drive the 1997 Twisted Metal 2 on PlayStation from Sony. And let style be your weapon. Now we're going to show you what it took to make this ad. The Underground has asked me to give you an eyewitness account of the making of the Twisted Metal 2 TV commercial. I'm David Bamberger, the product manager for Twisted Metal 2, and I accompanied the film crew to Prague and saw how they captured the look and feel of a luxury car ad. Prague was the perfect city. It's located in the Czech Republic and has a rich, glamorous feel that we were looking for. We were lucky to find Monique locally. But to get the properly arrogant male lead, we had to import Timothy from England. He actually turned out to be a nice guy. Of course, the real star of the ad is this fully loaded, heavily armed car. Style. Sophistication. The ability to launch napalm into oncoming traffic. Of course, a missile launcher wasn't a standard feature in these big American cars, so we added one. Instead of using a computer composite, we used a real explosion to get the reflection you're about to see in the actor's glasses. That's nice. That's very nice. ...to launch napalm into oncoming traffic. If these are the things you look for in an automobile, it's time you test drive Twisted. Okay. This next scene was really tough. Our model had a hard time overcoming the urge to run from the gunfire. With each blown take, the door had to be rebuilt with fresh explosive caps. And 
With only one door panel left, she pulled it off perfectly. All standard. Drive the 1997 Twisted Metal 2 on PlayStation from Sony. This is one of the last shots we did because the flamethrower actually melted the hood of the car. And let style be your weapon. The crew somehow found this big American car in Prague. They worked on it non-stop for a week and turned it into this twisted metal weapon of mass destruction. It wasn't street legal when we bought it, and it certainly wasn't street legal after. Well, there's your inside look, and remember, drive angry. Tim Brown came into our motion capture studio and the result you can see in the game, the smoothest animation in a football game today. That kind of stuff just blows you away really to see how they could take you running and put it on the screen and, and uh, fill it in with animation or whatever and, and it ends up being uh, a little football player in the game doing exactly what you were doing. So what it does is it, for each frame, it will go through and it will figure out where each of these dots actually were. They really don't mean anything until you start moving them. And once you start moving them, you can see basically where the hips and the knees and the ankles and all the joints are. Voila, you end up with a stick figure. You want to have a left foot, right foot, left foot so that you can take that and cycle it. It was really fun to be here with these guys and see how much uh, they really put into uh, making sure that these games are exactly how the guys are doing on the field. One play in the game, you draw it anywhere you want, you don't have to you draw it. What is that? What is that? I'm very, very excited about my special play because I guarantee you it's going to be a touchdown. Especially if you have the right receiver out wide. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's it, baby! E3 is America's largest trade show dedicated to the video game industry. You might have read about it in gaming magazines and maybe even seen a few pictures. But now, through the use of time-lapse photography, the underground takes you for a quick look inside E3 and the making of Sony's outrageous booth from the ground up. <laughs> 